Hello everyone, we are going to check out the new update of LTX Video 0.95 model. This one, I saw it launch last week in LTX and available for Comfy UI to support models. And as you can see, there are some new features. One of them is keyframe conditioning, where we're able to add different images as guidance for different timeframes in our videos, which is pretty interesting. But other than that, well, as you guys have probably tested other AI video models locally or commercially, AI models like if you compare human character image to video generation in LTX versus something generated in 1, 2.1. Now, as you can see, this is the same image, but then same image to video. The quality is totally on another level. So I don't think LTX will be my go to for general image to video use. Although both videos here are using the same image, they're not using the same AI models to generate them, and you can see the comparison. I guess you guys already know what the answer is. So I'm going to focus on using LTX with keyframe conditioning, which is something I find more interesting to check out, like the examples in the Comfy UI blog post. I did something like a mushroom with some beetle on top, for example. This is the first frame of the image, and then I masked it to add another box on top of this box in the middle of the frames, and it animates at the end. In this part, I also did a close-up shot of the beetle flapping wings. This kind of animation actually works really well in LTX. When you have one image like that, you can make another image where objects are moving, but everything else stays still. Only a part of the body moves. LTX tends to do very good animations for this kind of movement. Also movements like this, one guy stays still and his hair grows funky like this. Again, this can be done easily using LTX and it performs really well even with these small size AI models because it's just using a guiding image to produce very little parts of the animations in the video scenes. So I'm going to check that out. As I mentioned earlier, image to video or text to video in general in LTX isn't doing too well. As you can see, I'm not using any fancy settings here, just the default settings of LTX for image to video to make those three women talking. I also tried adding better quality for LTX using STG and enhancement, but it still doesn't improve much in terms of overall quality or motion for this AI model. But that doesn't mean this model can't be used or won't be able to run anything. At least it's a friendly, local AI model that can generate videos on a consumer PC. There's still something that can be done with these AI models, and I found that the keyframe conditioning they showcased in the Comfy UI blog post is pretty interesting. It runs pretty well using LTX. Now here we have the typical way of connecting image to video using LTX, but there's something to change in between, which is the LTX scheduler. We're passing the latent data using the LTX add guide. This way, we're adding an image as a frame to guide the AI model during a specific period of time. In this frame index, it'll use that image as the guiding motion starting from that point. And as you can see, there's another guide for LTX. Well, here you can also define the frame index. For example, during these videos, I want the frame index at 50 to switch over to another image from A to B. That's possible to do with the LTX conditioning, and it actually works pretty well for steady motions, like the ones I just showed, the man growing his hair or the beetle flapping wings. When the positions stay still, it does a pretty good job but not for big motions like this. If you want the beetle climbing from the top of the trees, starting from the mushroom, here's what happens. The first frames I created are pretty clear with well-defined image frames. But then when you use that for interpolations to another image frame, which in this part, I'm adding an image frame for the beetle climbing the trees. It doesn't handle big motions well. This LTX video model produces really blurry and inconsistent results for this kind of motion. On the other hand, if you have the object staying still, like in these examples, you're able to create pretty nice motions because it doesn't require this small size model to process too much. The only thing this AI model needs to do is animate the wings flapping. So I'm going to base my work on the keyframe workflow they showcased in the Comfy UI blog post. I'll do something similar to what they've shown in those examples, but I've modified it a bit. 
I've made quite a few changes here. This is for video generation in LTX. In this part, at the top, I'm using only one image. You only need one image to generate the rest of the images in the frame conditioning. Here's how it works. This is image one, loaded in the load image node. Then we're using a mask editor. Just right click and open it in the mask editor. You can mask the character and create the other image frames for image two, which will be used later in the LTX video frame conditioning generation. Add that as another image to serve as keyframes for future use in later generations. So, as I mentioned, I'll add the second image. That means image 2 goes into the LTX add guide here. This is set at frame index 50. So, frame index 0 starts with image 1. Here's what I'll do. Back at the top, we have image 1 in the load image node and then we're using the mask editor to mask the area and generate image 2 using flux in paint. We'll have the image 2 output here ready for us to use as the second frame inserted into the keyframe conditioning in LTX. I've also added redux image style transfer here just for referencing. If you have additional images for reference, you can use them here. Now I've set the image from a path because it's easier for you to reference other images on your local machine. Well, you can change that to load image if you prefer. A lot of people have asked me why not use load image instead of load image from path? Because I don't like duplicating all the images and inserting them again into the input folder in Comfy UI. That's just the way I work. You can switch it to load image if you want to. So in this case, I don't need to use Redux. Then I go to the bypass group, turn it off and come back to the beginning here. Make sure you have the right width and height settings for your video dimensions, as well as the length for the video. I've set it to 97 frames for this one and let's generate it here. One more thing, if you've enabled Redux, for example, here I've enabled Redux for image styling, it will input the image like this. For instance, if I want bomb hair on top of the man, and as you can see, if I just use a text prompt here, it doesn't have much effect. Instead, it only grows a little bit of hair based on the text prompt. But if you have some special styles, like this bomb hair, you can use Redux, and it'll create a totally different style compared to what I'd get using just a text prompt here to make the image. So as you can see, I've just generated the image. And right here, we're also using Redux to create the second image. Again, you can see this is another style compared to when I turned off Redux, where there was just a little bit of hair growth. The difference between that and this bomb hairstyle is dramatic. And that's exactly what we need. A clear difference between image 1 and image 2 for the LTX video generation later on. So after that, we've generated both images here, and now we're going to enable video generation. Then we go to the video generation group. Now we're going to generate the video here using those two images. We click run again and see how it goes. Here we have the generated video and you can see the animations. The guy has just a little bit of movement in the eyes and then the hair grows with some funky effects, giving it that quirky video vibe. Using this LTX keyframe conditioning, it doesn't require the AI model to animate the character's body movements or other object movements. The only thing the AI model needs to focus on is growing the hair in those few seconds. It's able to handle small tasks like this without any problems. But again, if you're using this AI model to animate an entire image, like an image to video, it sometimes won't handle things too well, especially faces. If you have multiple characters, processing different objects simultaneously isn't going to perform well for these models. But if you're just working with a still image and doing keyframe conditioning, it can handle it without any issues. I got another result where, well, the same style of video effect applies, and I animated this tennis playing woman, and the hair grows into something like Bigfoot hair, but then I wanted something even more dramatic, so I added way more hair in the last keyframes, covering the entire character's body. Yeah, something very dramatically changed within those few seconds. And it's possible to do that with this keyframe conditioning. The only thing I did was add some convenience here at the front part, using one image like that to animate with flux in paint, 
and Redux and then adding that into the video generation. You can do it without, you know, too much external work or plugging in multiple images. Of course, I didn't just use two keyframes. I used three keyframes as well. The only thing is, you have to handle multiple keyframes in the conditioning. Also, the frame index, you've got to manage it carefully, set good timing for your video. But again, for different video animations, you'll need to adjust the frame index yourself. There's no standard answer for what keyframe index will work best for your videos. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. So, that's about as far as we can go with this. And that's a brief start to how I see something useful in the new LTX video update. Instead of just using it for general image to video, which might require generating 10 times before you get one good video, LTX still has its place. For example, when using general image to video with LTX, you might need to generate videos 10 times to get a decent result. But with something like WAN 2.1, you might only need one or two tries to get the result you want. Yeah, with LTX, you might need a few more tries, sometimes even 10 generations, but the generations are fast. The only real benefit, the main advantage of LTX, is that it takes just 10 or 15 seconds to generate these videos. So, yeah, that's it for this video. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.